everybody from Matuska Tax Army Supply Company. I am doing the intro for Tom Matuska while he is on his way to Australia, Australia. with Jim Kimball, Brenda Duvall, and Vicki Matuska. And they were at the airport, I think they fly at two and have a long flight ahead of them. So look forward to the next week. Hopefully they'll be doing some live videos. But in the place, we have Mr. Pat Reed right here helping us out, Amber Ingalls and Brett Winkfield, and we are going to be talking about eyes. we got some exciting new stuff to talk about, There's a couple new products that are coming our way to show you guys, but if you have any questions, make sure to comment and let us know them and we'll answer them as we go along. Um, we go live every Thursday, so anytime you've missed or you want to catch up on some, you can always go back. We're going on a lot of videos. So you can go back and rewatch any of them. Make sure to share. We'll have a giveaway at the end of the hour. So share this video and just let us know your questions and comments and we'll answer them for you. Take it away. So before you're too far gone, <laughs> how come we're doing eyes? Eyes. Because it's Valentine's and I love Valentine's. Uh, the eyes have it. The eyes have it. <laughs> But maybe you have something special that goes along with eyes this week for all of our viewers. We do. We snuck it <clears throat> out early this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so it came out early, but we are doing 25% off all eyes except reflective. Reflective are 15% off, but 25% off. That's huge that's, savings. That's a that is a big You're actually looking at for bird eyes a dollar to a dollar seventy per pair, and for the rest of the mammals, it came to be about three to five dollars a pair That's for hard. eyes. So it's huge if you guys are planning ahead. Now is the time to do it. Yeah. But That's so. That's a lot of money. That's everything from chipmunks to guppies and. Mountain lions? Guppies. I used to have guppies. <laughs> <laughs> and they had eyes. Yeah. But no, that's a big savings if you buy in quantity. You save on shipping. Right. Yeah. If you if you order several pairs at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. So we've got a little bit of everything here. Um, do we want to start with what we've got in the middle? Yeah, some of the deer eyes. Yeah. Okay. We've got a bunch of the different styles. And Brett, you might need to kind of help me to mm -hmm. distinguish which ones are which. We've kind of got the dark brown and the light brown set up here so you can kind of see the difference because we get a lot of phone calls on that as far as people asking what's the difference between the dark and the light. Can you really tell there or is it something that might need to... Um, yeah, maybe a flashlight will help them. Tom Matuska is watching. Oh my goodness, no he pressure. must not be flying. No pressure. <laughs> mm, he's just going to be so we do get a ton of questions about eyes, and we're hoping that we can help you guys with anything that, any of those questions that you might have. Um, these are, um, starting at the top, these are all pre-rotated, aren't they? So we have a light and a dark, and it mm -hmm. looks like these are pre-rotated. And you can really see, with the dark, you can't see much of the much of the pupil inside of there, but with the light, you can see a lot of that yeah. A lot of the vermiculation and different coloration inside of the eyes yeah. there. And this is more of a compound lens. So this is this is more of our round eye. This is a compound lens here. You can see there's a little shape difference. Let's show them from the side maybe. Can you see the Yep. See the difference in the shape? Turn that for you. It's more of a forward look to the sclera. This one also has veining in um, in the white of the eye. And that can be kind of nice if you have a nice eye rotation going on to show a little bit of detail yep. in the back corners Absolutely. or in the front corners yep. of the eye. Um, moving up to this one, I think these are a very similar eye in shape to the previous, but they don't have veining. Mm-hmm. And these are not pre-rotated. So if you look, the pre-rotated portion comes all the way to the front and then and then has one white back. This is more of a traditional eye that would set a little more of a, a straightforward look. Mm -hmm. 
Moving down, these are also detailed in the sclera, the white portion of the eye with veining, um, but they're not the forward-looking lens. Um, okay. They're pre-rotated, but they're not forward-looking in the iris. And these would be everything, we carry this style of eye in mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. from African animals, mm -hmm. elk, deer, caribou. Um, one, of the, one of the great features of the new catalog this year is the eye reference chart yep. um, that will give you size and coloration for most North American species and even exotic and African species. So you're saying just that's because we don't label it as a bison eye, Correct. we yep. probably have it, or yep. an antelope eye, yep. we probably have Many it. Many different substitutes. Um, yep. Yeah, a lot of the African all use yeah. just different varieties of the eyes yeah. that we carry. So this is the eye chart they're talking about. So you find what, Very whichever one you're reference. looking at, yep. and it will tell you go to deer, 30 to 34 millimeter. Yeah. Page 45. Mm -hmm. um, there's even another row. Um, another, other slight differences. Um, we've got a, I would say this is possibly a Tohican pre-rotated. We, we also have the previous row that we looked at were payer eyes um, by the payer company. And these are Tohican, a medium and a dark brown um, pre-rotated eye. This looks like a meter, Tohican's meter with the dark brown band. Those Joe Meter eyes, you save like five dollars and fifty cents a pair. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have much more, uh, much more traditional. Um, still makes a good eye, round, um, solid eye. There's no white, um, no white to this eye. But if um, you're little... doing a straight looking, straightforward yep. looking deer, there's really very, very little. Of the white that would show so there's yep. there's a lot of very respectable taxidermists that don't even that don't use absolutely the kind of eye that has that scleral band how do you decide yes, which eye you're going to use that's a great question i think we we get that often <clears throat> um i think the eye for me it's more of a personal preference yep. we can really make we can make a great looking deer eye out of any of these. It's more what you're comfortable with, what you've been using, um, what fits your cape and coloration that your, your preference to is. Um, Does the customer know. push you in a direction? Do you push the customer in a direction with your preference? Um, or unless the customer opposed? really comes right out and tells you, most of the time they don't, they yeah. don't really go with anything. and. Um, and we don't really discuss a lot of eyes unless we were going to be using some kind of a reflective eye, then that would be something that we would, we would consult with the customer about and make sure that they wanted something like that. But as far as just what kind of deer eye we use or what kind of fish eye we use, it's not really something. We just no, I go with something that, that works good for us and yeah, what we've gotten comfortable right. using um, over the time. And we've also found that you can use it as a selling point too. If you are using a little more expensive eye, you can yeah. have take it um take the meter eye um if you put this on your front counter and sell it to your customer now understand this is a a how much 20 20 dollar eye this is eight maybe yep mm -hmm. and so if you're doing 100 deer heads a year there's a significant savings in eyes but depending upon what your price point is if you were using this eye it would definitely be worth having an extra pair that you can show your customer put it on the front counter shine a flashlight through the back of it, show them what they're actually getting. So um, that would be an option too. Um, you mentioned the reflective eyes, you wanna show them those? Yeah, the reflective eyes are a lot of fun. They are really, really, really cool. Um, they show off a lot of that, a lot of that reflective feature that a lot of your mammals have. And they and actually it, look like a normal eye. Mm -hmm until the light hits them just right. So it's right. not like you're getting the bright green glow no. every single time you look at it. It's only when the light hits it right. Yep. And you can see that <clears throat> that greenish 
little flash in the eye without a flashlight. You don't need a flashlight. We're just kind of doing that so you can really see it. But when it's hanging in the room and you walk by it just the right, you know, yeah. with the lights in the room, we'll pick it up. And it's just a neat, a neat 3D effect to the eye. Yeah, definitely And even when you look at it from the side, it's just a really, really neat looking eye. Yeah, well, very well designed. Mm -hmm. um, what is that mark awesome. for there? Um, the mark, and we get a lot of phone calls on this, the mark that's here, if you look directly at this eye, that pupil is not perfectly centered in the eye. So that dark mark that's up there, actually when you go to set your eye, you're gonna put that straight up and that way the pupil, it sits a little bit further up than what the center of it is. So if you put both your marks straight up, then your pupils will match in levelness and in direction. Good question. Yeah, and that's definitely an eye that you, you want to spend some time talking to your customer about and let them know what they're getting because mm -hmm. that it's so subtle, mm -hmm. um, but it's got a great effect and your customers will really enjoy it. Yeah. They're definitely not cheap. However, right. that's a price thing too to your customer. Sure. That's a selling point that when you send your customer home and they bring them out and they have their friends over and they're like, oh, look at this and yeah. showing them. Yep. It's uh, very impressive to show off that part of it. I think that the price point though is not, it's not outrageous compared to the other glass eyes like versus no. a, a reflective coyote eye versus a regular glass coyote eye. I, I think it's You're looking at a Joe Meter style surprising. eye yeah. for yeah. the deer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's, it's very well worth it. Um, and there are different styles of them. So this one is the full, we've got the full domed back. This one's flat. There's a flat style. And these, this one's still reflective, even though it's flat, it just doesn't have as, as much of that reflective feature. It still is in there, but it's not quite as deep. Deep in the pupils are actually a little bit smaller on the flat backs, mm -hmm. which there's your price point too. The see flat it. backs are a little bit less expensive than your back hemisphere one. Um, this one she's showing you right here. These are all bare, so you have three styles of bare. This is an anatomical lens, and it has a little bit, you see the shape to the iris there on the other side, yep. Sorry. And then the color around the rim. And then you have the, your next price point would be the other one, this guy, which has your hemisphere, and then the flat back. So those are your three styles that we have in a couple different varieties. And because they have that, that extra dome in the back, you'll have to set them a little bit differently. You'll have to accommodate for that extra dome because if you would just put that up in your mannequin like you would a flat-backed eye, it's going to naturally stick out further because of that dome. So you're going to have to remove some of the backing of the foam in order to be able to set that and still get the correct effect but they are very neat. And here's some of the different, here's, this is a fox eye here. That's a bobcat. That one would be, I'm not even sure, is this mountain lion here? Fox bear. Yep, they're very, very neat. But some of the they other eyes. eyes from across the room too. Mm -hmm. Who has these? Who carries this? Oh, and I love being exclusive with stuff. <laughs> they are exclusively sold at Matuska Taxidermy Supply Company. So you right. can't find them anywhere else in the U.S. Yep. except for us, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. It is pretty exciting. Awesome. Another it's thing nice. that's exclusive with us. Oh, boy. All kinds of exclusives. Oh, look at this. Just her eyes Here's get all wild-eyed. Oh, fresh God. off the Where press. Where did you get that? <laughs> I'm the lucky one. I think I only have the only copy out right now, so. Uh, <laughs> and Clint Ricky, I am really sorry, but we're gonna, I'm going to have to buy you a few beers and sit down at the Wisconsin show because I've had a lot of requests for you to sign all these DVDs. Autograph so copies. autographed copies are coming your wow. way. It's going to cost me a few pictures, but. <laughs> um, no, that DVD is out. And it's mounting a competition whitetail with Clint Rickey. Um, we will have it next weekend. 
um, Cole is bringing it to the Wisconsin show. So then we'll bring, be bringing it back. And we're taking pre-orders now. And this is another thing that is exclusively, we're the only supply company that carries them next to Taxidermy University with Cole. And so we're pretty excited to be have that partnership with them. But this has um, four DVDs. It's $130. Um, you can't go wrong. It, mm -mm. From what we've seen, it looks like a great series, and we are excited to see the whole thing. So I'll show you at the end of the video, I will show you the YouTube that they have going of it right now. So. And for anybody who's, who's done a lot of competing, you know, that's a... The whitetail division is a it's a stiff division, so any kind of direction that you could get in that area is really that's yeah. uh that's worth a lot of the videography is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. they've done a great job. Yeah. Yeah. They really have. Um, and it's that time of year. It's anybody that's right? getting their show yeah. pieces ready. Yeah. Um, this might be you. this might be the time to pick up a few tips or tricks or mm -hmm. hints from Clint from is awesome video. when it comes to a deer. Yeah. It makes it look easy. Brent Dennison, I've actually seen this a few times too. I've seen on some group pages every now and then have a number, a member talk about their fish eyes clouding over when they go to clean them after painting. I think it would be cool to talk about the difference in glass versus acrylic and how that applies to solvents. That is wow. a fantastic idea. Awesome. That's really wow. funny. Brent. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we were a little bit prepared for that because we've heard it too. We get that question yeah. often and um, thought it would be worth addressing um, the difference between acrylic and glass. So um, there is a glass eye right here. Um, this is a to Tohican glass. Um, first, just anatomically, the difference being this only includes the iris. So if this were, say, a 20-ish millimeter eye, um, this would fit in an opening on the fish that might be 26 millimeters um, because we still have to build that, uh, that sclera around here to create that ball. Um, difference on this, this is a 20 millimeter largemouth bass in a flex eye that includes the scleral band or ball. And you can see how much larger the back of the eye actually is. Okay, so there's always been some questions on ordering fish eyes, and that's when we order them, we order them by the iris size, which would be true to the glass. But when you get into a flex eye, we order that based on this distance. Complicated in, in ordering, but um, you have a traditional glass eye here. Flex eyes are kind of a rubber eye. Um, they're, just as the name suggests, they're slightly flexible, um, makes them very, very easy to work with. Yeah, very, very versatile, because if you need to, you can actually trim a little bit of the base away to get them to, to slide into. Just with the, even a, a scissors, just yep. tip that in an angle yep. and you can trim it right around. Yep, don't even have to use a Dremel or anything like that. So this, um... I wouldn't necessarily call it acrylic, but it is plastic, and it will scratch easier than a glass eye would. Mm -hmm. um, so that is one that we get the question about that Brent alluded to. Another one that's acrylic is the aqua eye. Here, this is a plastic lens. It does include the sclera. Um, and we've got a large mouth northern pike eye here in another 20 millimeter. So slightly different in shape, slightly different in coloration. That's kind of a personal preference thing. Um, if you look at your fish reference, you can see fish vary an awful lot um, in color. And it's kind of hard That's to see I in the those, camera. I thought I was doing good by pulling the same large I mouth know, bass they're very yeah. different. Oh. Very, very <laughs> different, yeah. Totally different. Um, and the last one is the still life lens. So for those who have great reference and are looking for something specific um, that might not be available to you color-wise, um, the still life lenses come in two varieties and you can paint your own eye. Um, so this would be a real standard warm water pupil, um, easily painted from the inside. You would paint them on the back. Um, and this, um, some species, some fish 
require a different pupil, um, and this would allow you to paint your own pupil. How would you go about doing that in a summed up fast version? Very carefully. Yeah. <laughs> um, using your version. reference. What, color, what um, paint base would you use? What paint? Um, a lot of times they'll use a paint pen, um, which works very well. Um, it settles, it dries well, um, it's easy to control. Um, that works pretty good. Um, I probably would try not to use lacquer because I may use other lacquers. I may use it in an airbrush. And will you let me open these? Yeah. Okay, this is the lens caddy. And this is what makes painting um, these eyes very, very easy. This caddy is designed to hold the eye itself so that this is a set. Yes. And they are, let's see if we've got them all the way up to maybe a 20-ish, like so. And what's really cool about this is if we were to take this eye and set it in the caddy. Why would you ever do this to yourself? I don't know. <laughs> it's very hard. The competition um, is that points it, for it competition. Is. Yes. Um, you definitely would get consideration um, when you're competing. Um, also, if you have a, a different, say, saltwater fish, they have very different pupils oftentimes, and discerning customers might notice that. Um, but what's cool about the lens caddy is now it's easy to hold on to. The eye is secure, not going to fall out. And if you look, there's a plus right in the middle, and it will help you center your pupil in the middle of that, in the middle of that acrylic sphere. So you would paint your pupil, I would seal it um, with an aerosol sealer, come in with your powders and your paints, um, come up with your eye, your eye coloration, um, seal it again, and then you would set it just like you would any of the others, it would come out very much like this an eye that would include the scleral band and the iris. Now those still life lenses are also on the 25% off. Holy smokes. I love you, Sale. <laughs> I. I. I love you. I can't uh, believe it. Isn't that something? Um, so so that works out pretty well. So the lens caddies you can buy separately or in the grouping. Oh, nice. Okay, so now we've talked about those. We still haven't answered Brent's question about the acrylic um, the acrylic fogging. So we have an eye up here. This is one of the aqua eyes. And we also get the same question in the bird eyes. So we'll show you that in just a second. Give you that. Yeah. Or you had a brush, I think. Oh, yeah, I am. Um, so this is lacquer thinner, and a lot of us paint with lacquer based paints. Um, and when you get lacquer, paint on your eye and you want to clean it, oftentimes you'll come over, clean it nice and sparkly clean like so, and as it dries you'll notice they slightly fog over. Now this um, Reinhardt eye has a, a protective coating, um, they don't fog as easily, but they do fog and they do scratch. So. If we were to get a scratch in this eye, Don't do it. like so, can you see that? Yep. Okay, it happens. We use metal tools when we're doing epoxy work. Um, it's, it's just the reality of the business that we're in. We have to be super careful, but sometimes things happen. So lacquer thinner, cleaning it all up, um, still has a scratch. It's less, but it's there. Um, the good thing about a fish is we're going to gloss the fish. And 99% of the time, if you were to get a deep scratch like we just did with a metal tool, you can buff this lightly with steel wool, which will lessen the scratch. It will cloud the lens, but then when we gloss it, they'll gloss up nice and pretty. Um, you won't even know that you had a scratch there. Same holds true for the flex eye. Um, we often use these in our studio because they're nice and easy to use, very user-friendly, and the colorations are, are outstanding, and oftentimes we'll get a little bit of, of a scratch, or we'll get um, some fogging from, from cleaning. 
Um, so gloss for a fisheye works very well. Um, you can use, whether you're using an aerosol gloss or an automotive gloss, um, that will take out most scratches. Now, do you want to show them with the with the bird eye how we would do it on yeah. a bird? So here's an example of kind of the same thing that happening with the bird eye. This is one that's been just kind of rubbed with a little bit of lacquer thinner, and I'm sure you can probably tell the difference there. Um, it's really, really noticeable. I don't know where the little flashlight, there we go. Let's see if we can kind of shine a little light. So I don't know if you can tell the dullness on these, but, and even this one has got some big scratches that's coming up along the side there. And again, it's just, it's because these are an acrylic bird eye and that it just happens sometimes. So something that you can do if you end up with some fogging is you could take a little bit of, we like to use triple thick and we thin it out quite a bit. So this is, this is what it will come like, but it's a real, real thick, thick kind of material. And it's good to use in certain applications like that, but for most of the stuff that we use it for, we're, we like to thin it out. You so, thin it out and save it like that? Mm -hmm. So like right when you get it open, you'll add water to it. Yeah, and I'll usually have another container about this size, so I'll dump show part of it in there. Tilt it and show them how the consistency. It's very, very runny here. I'll actually just dip a nice long brush. So you can see it drips off of a brush pretty nice and easy. And we'll use this to be able to get rid of the fogging on eyes. You can go right over an entire eye with that. Um, you could even do it on, on a glass eye, like a deer mm -hmm. eye. Some yep. people will, will get scratches on a deer eye or acrylic eyes. Um, these eyes earlier, and I don't know if we mentioned it, that these reflective eyes earlier are acrylic. So this is the only downfall of working with these you is, that they, another pair. is that they are acrylic. So you have to be very cautious and, and a little bit more gentle when, when working with them. Now so, to fix scratches too, but you also use it for wetness on the eyes. Yep. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Same so, consistency? Yes, yeah. same consistency. Just you keep this thinned out. And I just I usually write it on the top thinned, you know, so I know I'm grabbing the right the right one. But after we do all of our airbrushing and all the epo epoxy's been done, airbrushing's been done. This is like the last thing that we'll do to to our eyes on any of our any of our mammals. Mm -hmm. Um, is I'll come through with a really fine, fine little tip. I'll start a drip in the front corner um, up by the carnacle, and then I'll take and lightly run it on the eyelid, kind of down the eyelid and back up to the back corner. And just very careful keeping, keeping it just on the eyelid, but that, that little bit of, of material goes into the seam of your eyelid and the glass eye and it gives it a really nice wet teardrop yeah. kind of if i didn't yeah. thin it would it still work that way it tends to be a little globby i, yeah. I guess so too globby yeah. to be able to kind work with spread. yeah like yep. somebody poked you in the eye with a stick it looks so, like yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of moisture and right again there. you're thinning the triple thick as yeah. soon as you open it up you're thinning it with water yeah it's only half as thick not triple thick. <laughs> triple yeah. thick. Yeah. Double thick. Double it's thick. just thick. Yeah. It's just thick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then it stays like that. It's not going to, you yep. can use it over it, and over yes. and over. Yep. Just we like just that. keep it in the jar like that. Yeah, I, I think that yeah. we've had the same container around for well over a year, yeah. maybe yeah. a year yeah. and a half. Go a long way it's, it it might much. get crusty and, and stick on the edge when you go to open it up, but it, the material itself stays good. Yeah. yeah. So you can just take this. And watch out for air bubbles when I when it, when I use this. I always take and I stir it up first, but don't stir it too rapidly because it'll get little air bubbles in the top, and those air bubbles will transfer into your drip, and they will be seen. Um, they'll leave little tiny air bubbles in your in your teardrops or whatever you're covering. So do watch out for air bubbles. But you can go ahead and coat an eye. And if you're doing this on a bird, be careful how much you use. You don't want to use so much that it's going to ooze all over your little surrounding feathers, but you can lightly coat it 
and that will bring back that sheen and take out the fogginess on an eye and just let it sit for just a little bit and any kind of little brush marks if you have it thinned out enough any little brush marks will just kind of fade away and give you a nice yeah. smooth looking eye. Can you eye. do that at any point of the mounting process? I would probably do it at the end. Just be the last just thing, the very last yeah. thing. Don't yep. waste your time. Exactly. Yeah, because you might scratch it again later. Um, but um, one other thing, so that often happens during finish work or during the mounting process. Um, we paint them. Uh, we do an awful lot of paint work around the eye, um, and so we've got a couple different products to protect the eye from paint. Um, do you want to show them some of those? Yeah. These are really good and kind of like with the fish, sometimes you would use this kind of material and sometimes you would even use yeah, an yeah. oil-based clay. A lot of times they yeah. use just a, a dollop of oil-based clay. Yeah, that works pretty well for the fish. It goes on easy. We're not dealing with hair or any extended eyelid. So um, it works, oil-based clay works well for fish, uh, not so well for mammals. Um, because of the overhanging eyelid. Um, yeah, the thickness of the oil clay sometimes will create a shadow. Um, so we try not to do that, but it works well on fish. And we showed you that um, a couple weeks ago when we did the largemouth bass, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we showed you doing that. So um, this is what we would do for finishing any of our game heads or mammals. Yep, so this is eye, this is eye protect. This is a little bit of a thinner kind of eye material and what this would be used for is you'd paint it onto a glass eye in fact could I uh -huh. just use this one as an example um, one thing about using these I do like to protect my brushes because this material um, it is it is of the latex sort so yep. it can destroy yep. a brush pretty quickly so whenever I go to use this with a brush I like to have a little um, a little bit of Dawn dish soap in some water or or just touch the top of a Dawn dish soap lid and then just kind of wipe it off and that's going to kind of coat your bristles on your brush and keep it from destroying it because otherwise um, sometimes you'll notice a gumminess to your brush that won't yeah. go away after using this stuff so it's not a bad idea to just have a touch of Dawn dish soap on your brush first and this stuff this one here this eye protect is a thinner material so it can be a little bit more finicky and, and hard to control. Um, and really it's just a, a preference point. There's eye protect and then there's eye frisket. The eye frisket does the exact same thing. It's just easier to control and it goes on a little bit thicker. This one goes on thin, but it's very, very easy to get a drip if you get too much material going on. But you can also control and get a really, really pretty line and you want it on kind of kind of thick. If you put it on too thin, it's just going to rip and tear. So you would go around your eye, right? Get as close to your eyelid as you possibly can. Any material or that you don't want to have airbrushed, you would cover, and you're going to let that dry. Okay. Once that dries, it's going to turn into a thin layer I guess and it'll peel off of your eye once you're all done airbrushing so you'll be able to go over this and airbrush it once it's all dry and there won't be any paint that gets onto your eye so it's going to completely block off any paint so this is the material this is the eye frisket on this one yeah so that is actually our go-to is the eye frisket yep it's yep. a little thicker it's it thicker dries white. this is our the Matuska go-to yep. yep and the eye um the eye protect is tinted green, but it dries very clear. Yep. Mm -hmm. And because it's so thin, you might put a couple coats of it on. Yeah. Um, yep. And be careful if you would use that because it's so thin that it can drip down into your eyelid. So this is this is the eye frisket, and you can see it's got some thickness to it here. And you can just I usually when I take it off. It's all been dried, it's been airbrushed over, and so you go to remove it, just kind of start at the back corner and grab a hold of it. You can see it kind of turns into an elastic kind of material and just kind of pull. I can't believe Mandy's not doing that. I know, she Mandy loves doing loves this. Do you can do the other eye if you want to. Yeah, do it, do it, do it. She's just chopping at the bit back here. 
<laughs> um, sometimes there is a little bit of a different, a little bit of an area around the eyelid that you could go ahead and clean up a little bit with a scalpel very carefully so you don't chip the, the yeah. eyelid paint. That when would you're wreck your over. day. Yeah. yeah. When you're starting over, right? Yeah. yeah. But that would be about how we would do that. So then after that, you'd clean up that little bottom lid and then you could go ahead and put on your, your uh, yeah. triple Yeah, the triple click. So I might as well just go ahead and do that real quick and just show them what it looks like on side of an eyelid if I could get it cleaned up. Which, do you hold on. on. Sure. Owners? We have our, so every week again, you're with Matuska Tax Army Supply Company and we go live every Thursday at 4.30 Central Time and we do giveaways at the end. So our two giveaway winners this week and it's the first one to chime in and let us know you're watching, Jim McCarthy or Dream Catcher Taxidermy. So either one of you, if you let us know you're watching, we'll pick, otherwise it'll go to a live lucky viewer. Um, I think we have a reference eye CD, which has like over 70 really good eye pictures. We have a couple different reference books. Water brush. And a water brush still in there. And then member, you guys, this is last week's sharing of the video. You might want to watch that process. Um, remember to share. Next week, we are going to be giving away um, possibility, to, possibility to win Clint Ricky's new DVD. So you have to share this video in order to be in the drawing for that. For the Chance. DVD? Yep, for the DVD. That's $130 DVD. Wow. That's an awesome That's deal. A Holy mm -hmm. cow. Yeah. Deal, what are we going to do next week? We've got to do something awesome. We're going to have a lot of people watching. We might not. We won't be here. Oh, we'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We don't have to do it. It should be live. You it's know what? We'll do, it. We'll, we'll, right. do it. Dude, Clint, exactly. we'll do it live with Clint, and it will be signed. Oh, right, Clint? Right. 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 It'll right. be a signed copy with Clint. <laughs> this is what we're doing. I think we just, we just hit 10,000 viewers next week. Yeah, so make yep. sure you share this video, and we will choose a winner for next week chance at that. Even Sadie wants to come in. Dreamcatcher Taxidermy or Jim McCarthy. And if we don't hear from them pretty soon, are we going to choose from our viewers? We will. Nice. We did have Miranda Cress was um, wanting us to do a tanning video, which was cleared by Tom to do at some point. And she says, you guys still are the best and everyone out there is blessed to have a team like you who is willing to share these videos and help out the taxi community. Oh my gosh, how much did we pay her? Thank you, Miranda. We <laughs> love hearing that and we love the positive feedback. It keeps us doing what we're doing. So thank you very much. So if you guys were, were watching here, you can kind of see that this stuff, if you have it thinned out properly, it really did most of the work for me. I didn't have to, to really move it. It kind of flowed right around that eye all by itself. Now I just leave it and I went right over the car knuckle area, right over your membrane, make sure those look all nice and glossy, and then just leave this and let this dry and it'll dry with a nice, a nice coat and it'll look like a, a real nice wet eye. And sometimes we have noticed that as this sits, if there is any kind of void in your epoxy work between the glass eye and your epoxy, sometimes this will find its way down into there and you might end up with a little air bubble or a little hole as it dries. So it's not a bad idea to do this process and then come back and look at it. And you might have to do it a second time because every now and then you'll find an air pocket and it'll, it'll show up. So if you do it twice, if you see an air pocket, it'll fill right in and looks really good. Nice. That is a nice looking eye. Yeah, those look nice. I see myself in there. <laughs> <laughs> look close, there's Kirsten. She's never on camera. <laughs> I wondered where she was at today. She's, yeah. in, she's in the eye. <laughs> in the eye. Yeah. She's in the eye. Um, a couple of fun, other fun little things to show. Um, we offer a pretty cool bird head. We do and have. And that line this, is about as complete as they come. This is Corey Crothers Wildlife Illusions. We have, he's actually, Desiree must be on him because he's been pumping some <laughs> yeah. heads and bodies yeah. out. So I like it. But look at the detail of the teeth in there. I mean, they are 
amazing heads and the muscle definition. But we're talking bird eyes. We're looking at your bird eyes you got over there. We have the spheric style. I brought the pheasant just to show the difference. But you have Tohican the spheric, which are these ones. You have our live eyes, which have two different styles. There's a one and a two. The one has um, less orange around, and the two has more. So those are your live eyes, one and two. Same size and everything. And then this is the aspheric style. And then these are the AB. The AB are actually what Corey's heads are all built around. And so they actually pop right in. So for example, if I were to, do you have a Chicago cutlery knife? My go-to. Um, you'll notice um, his heads have kind of just a rim around there and our eyes come, you pop this little nubbin off, trim around real quick and they pop right into the head very nicely. So they work really well with all, all of his heads do. Now a lot of people don't like the ABIs and might choose the flat backs or that. No, that's what I'm used to. Um, we'll choose, so what I'm doing is I'm just going around and getting that excess um, what would you Blanche. call it? Yeah. Blanche or plastic. And then you take it and it just sticks right in there. It's in already. So then this, I'm going to find that nubbin. I'm going to pop it off, scrape it. And I'm not scraping up angled at the eye. I'm scraping right around the side edge. But if you were to scratch it, we know how to fix That's it. That's true. <laughs> and then it pops right in. Um, if you were a fan of the flat <laughs> eyes, that would be an issue with these, so you just dremel it out. We actually, Corey's made the DIY heads, it's the exact same head as this, but he hollowed it out to the right size that accepts all the other eyes, and we call nice. it do-it-yourself. For instance, these live eyes have this screw on the back side of it. Why, everyone wants to know. Well, it's because they're molding, so they can get it out of the mold. So it's really just an easy snip, Ow. and it will, <laughs> and it will right fit now. right in. Now I got to do it to this one so we can sell it as a pair. Um, oh, geez. <laughs> but so it snips right, and then it will actually fit right into the do-it-yourself heads, nice. which is really nice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So those are your bird eyes. Oh, we also have the flex. Yep. The flex. So this would be the pheasant flex eyes, and they come with eye rings. Yep, very similar to the fish. Um, but the cool part about the flex eye, I think, is the eye ring. Mm -hmm. Especially for wood ducks. Mm -hmm. Yep, this um, is that's a challenge. Yeah, we've, we've been doing birds with students this week, and several of them have built, built eye rings, and I think every one of them can tell you that it, <laughs> that's pretty challenging. Yep. Mm -hmm. We'll have to get Corey on that. Yeah, we've said that for years. Corey, um, are you listening? <laughs> um, I mean, we just left uh, birds with most of our students. Some of our not so fast students are still doing birds, but we've moved into game heads. And one of the things that we've preached over the last few days is reference, reference, reference. We do have some pretty cool reference casts. Um, available too. These are white-tailed deer here. Actually, we've got a mule deer over here and a white-tail here. Um, those were from Brian Olson and Mike, Mike Geska. Geska. Yep. 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 Um, super handy. You can see them. They're very fresh. They're very fresh molds um, and great detail for depth of eye. Include the, the lacrimal crease in front. Show a little detail of the nictitating membrane and caruncle. Um, just kind of a, a really nice cast, gives you a lot of information there. Um, as well as, um, we've been showing over the past several weeks, um, the Whitetail Deer Reference Flipbook. Um, and those are some amazing pictures. pictures. Super awesome. pictures, super, super pictures. I got pictures. more from Mr. Dan Ritz. Really? To add oh, to that's really good. That's awesome. They're amazing. So that will be coming out soon as well, I hope. This little eye sale is pushing me back a little bit. <laughs> but um, that will hopefully be coming out too with some more amazing pictures by him added to them. Yeah. Um, did we get a winner yet? Pictures. No. Nobody? Nobody's watching? Well, 
There's people watching. <laughs> <laughs> Our winners are Jim McCarthy and Dreamcatcher Taxidermy. Either one of you. We need to start picking like 15. Yeah. No, no kidding. To it. <laughs> no kidding. Um, um, another cool tool are these micro applicators. Um, and we use them. You've, you've heard us talk about the pan pastels. Um, we use them with those. Um, but they also make a great cleaning tool. And the reason these are so nice is everybody that does a little competition work knows that craftsmanship, 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 um, it, it makes the difference in points. I would say having, having judged fish before, I would say that craftsmanship is the one area that everybody can improve on across sure. the board. There's um, nothing that's gonna be worse than them looking at your eyes and having them dirty. Yeah, yeah, there's dirty, some dirty eyes yep. or, or any part Q -tip, of... Q-tip, little fuzz in the corners. Yeah, um, and the neat thing, you bring up the Q-tip fuzz, the neat thing about these micro applicators is they are microfiber and so they don't leave fuzz. There's no, there's no messy fuzz or anything. Yep. Um, so these are, are great. They're also plastic, so they are not going to scratch your eye. Um, so these work really good. We have them in two sizes and an assorted kit here. Um, or they work, they work good for just about anything under the sun. They do. I think I they mean, sell really three do. different oh. kit styles. Yep. They mm -hmm. also work great for fingernails and toenails when you're painting. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing that oh out there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it is Valentine's Day. Yeah. Babies <laughs> that are getting ready for a big date night. Um, but this is a pretty cool kit that you've put together too. Um, mm -hmm. Applications for about everything. You've got um, a cotton swab here. Um, we've got a, a nice eye polish, an acrylic lens polishing um, compound, and then also a microfiber towel, um, which works well. So handy to have. Um, this this little kit goes to every show for yeah. me because Put it in your competition. Yep, definitely need that in your competition box. Yeah, exactly. um, as you get there, we shine. We tend to shine more flashlights on our competition stuff and when we yeah. get into the showroom lighting is always different and there's that little dirty spot we didn't see from the studio um yeah. you can catch it when you yep. get there and if you don't use it there's somebody else yeah. that forgot theirs and they'll probably yep. need to borrow it yep. <laughs> yep. um we need to pick a number okay we'll get a number going do you want to maybe okay. show that because we do have copies yeah. of that. No. Yep. Let's get pick Pat to pick a number. Uh, yeah, pick a number. Pat, pick a yeah. number. Yeah. You gotta, does he get to write it down somewhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something which to write with. Um, and while he's making this terribly critical, hard decision, um, <laughs> we'll talk real quick about. Let's go um, one through 30. One through 30. All right, guys. Oh, they're already guessing. Oh, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> Let's yeah. start over. He, he hasn't even figured it out yet. And I already um, have a winner. <laughs> you do? Uh, I just saw what he wrote, yeah. Uh, there. Oh, let's let him keep going a little bit. <laughs> suspense. Suspense. No, that, was suspense. Uh, that was easy. Um, but this is a handout that, that Tom put together that is just an absolutely outstanding handout. As we talk about, about setting eyes for deer, um, this covers several different attitudes. Um, the lighting is great, so you can see pupil angles. Um, we're looking at really soft shapes. You've got this nice, light, soft crease. Um, how much of the soft skin area shows in the front of the eye. Um, and then some nice directions here, too. Um, talking about a three-cornered eye set and uh, some of the geometry that goes behind that. And then, uh, and finally, a little bit of a... A guideline. So if this interests you, if this is something that you think would help you out, Mandy, if they order their eyes and ask for it specifically, we'll send it to them? Um, yes, with your order, if you place an order, we can yeah, get that. Yeah, they send us an order. You? Yeah. Otherwise, it's $9,000 if they want one by, all by itself. Yes. <laughs> I'm not paying for but, the shipping. <laughs> place an order, we'll, we'll put it in the box. Stamp. <laughs> all right. Talk about this real quick, just for Jesse. No, oh just my for Jesse. <laughs> Jesse. <laughs> All right. So flushing, flushing can always be a tricky thing, and thinning out hides. A lot of people um, will struggle in this area for 
long periods of time. Some people will get the knack of it, and some people just, it's tough. It's a its a scary thing um, to be running scalpels next to your fingers, and yeah. um, took me cutting myself a whole lot before I perfected it. I cut myself it. on so. the first open, so it is sharp. <laughs> oh. It is sharp. So this is a handy little tool, um, and it's a, it's a, a versatile tool to kind of get away from using a scalpel and they have it it's it's got a little hand grip kind of thing on there to kind of show you how you would hold it you'd put your fingers here and I think you put your thumb on this side it looks like is how you do it and then you run it this way and it kind of instead of holding a scalpel um, I typically run my scalpels this way you know this runs this way so you would put it up onto a beam or a board of some sort and you would flesh it this way down to be able to thin your hides. And the students have just rave reviews on this. They've been loving it. They <laughs> Does it play music? Or I don't know. It looks like They're going kazoo. nuts over this, but they've had great yeah. Lots. Yeah, they have. So we got it, so, and it's from Helping Hand, and we got it, and it is fourteen ninety five, and you can find it for sale yeah. now. So if fleshing is is a challenge for you, try it. Yep. You know, the, it comes with five replacement blades, mm -hmm. yeah. and, and they, it's they're just sharp, just pretty standard like, double edged razor blade. And so these blades are kind of cheap, yep. you know, as compared to scalpel blades. These blades are kind of cheap, so yep. it, it's a definitely an option. I still think it should play music. Yeah. It has like, you can press different buttons. <laughs> um, <laughs> maybe you'll be so happy movie. when you're using it, you'll be singing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'll sing. I like that. So remember, we are right now 25% off all our eyes, reflective our 15, side note. But every other eye is 25% off. We're doing it through Monday. The promo code is I love you. You can find it on the website. I get it, E-Y-E. Love you. Oh, for yeah, Valentine's, happy Valentine's Day to everybody. But um, take advantage of that, you guys. You are saving three to five dollars a pair. That's yes. just huge right there. So take advantage of that. We're going to be giving away next week at the Wisconsin show two, the show. two right. of Clint Ricky's new DVD two by Cole Cruikshank, oh, Taxer oh, University, two. mounting a competition white tail. So what you need to do to get this, there's two different things. So you could have a chance at twice. But one is we will be posting this this out tonight. Find it, like it, share it, tag a friend. Those three things. Like, share, tag a friend. We'll pick one winner from this ad on our Facebook page. The other one is to share this video that you're watching right now next to your comments. So share that. And um, you will have your chance. But here's a sneak peek of it. Yay! <laughs> I'm Clint Ricky with Tax Dreaming University, and this DVD series. Like I just said, the most important thing. What is the most important thing? <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll see you at the next show. I like it. Um, so you can see by this, Cole has done an amazing job putting um, the DVD series together. So take advantage of that. This is, I think you get eight hours. There's eight hours of how to stop ads. What's going on? Oh my, Shut up. Oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> this that thing plays so I much music. See. What was that, Kirsten? <laughs> um, there's, over, there's eight hours of video here. Eight hours of Clint Ricky. Yeah, right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but um, $130. Share the video you're watching right now. Go find this tonight and like, share, tag a friend. And we'll be giving away two, hopefully signed. We'll talk to Clint wow. about it. 
maybe Cole, get them both to sign it. Oh, oh my goodness. Um, wow. On that note, though, there is also Taxidermy University has other DVDs that we have, and they're exclusively through Taxidermy University with Cole or Matuska Taxidermy. So find those. Um, they're all phenomenal. So check those out. Who's the winner? Dave Larson. Dave Larson. You get to pick a bag. Wow. Choose bag. Choose bag. Choose bag. Pick a bag. Pick a bag. Um, Wisconsin people, we're coming to Wisconsin. Your DVDs will be available there through us. Wow. You have Brett, Amber, Pat, Mandy. Is your bag choice? Um, Pre-orders, you get 15% off and free shipping, so you can't beat that. Yeah, that's got to be. What is shipping on on? Well, three speedy, corn? so they're kind of. Good, They're but spoiled. it's still a tremendous help. But yeah, you're yeah. looking at anywhere from fifteen to twenty dollars for shipping. Yep. Speedy Zone, FedEx is usually around thirty to forty. Yep. Um, and fifteen percent. Poor Pat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's gonna have to come visit more. Yeah. How are we yeah. doing for pre-orders? How's the trailer? Is the trailer it's getting, getting pretty full? full. Yeah. So call in soon. Yep. It's getting pretty full. So definitely place your orders. When are we cutting off pre-orders? You know, I will. We'll do it until it gets loaded. So. Oh. Okay, I didn't say that. No, we're not going to be loading. We're putting pre-orders probably, I think we're leaving Thursday morning. So I would say Monday, Monday they're going to be cut off. Yeah. Monday, Tuesday yeah. they're going to be cut off latest. Um, and it depends on our space, but we'll let you know. So definitely take advantage of that. Your bag, please. Ooh. Oh, Mandy. Ooh. Mandy. Oh, it's a good one. Oh. No, mine was They're all good. <laughs> <laughs> all good. <laughs> The water oh brush. Yeah. Yeah. You water get the brush. water brush. In stock. That's pretty exciting. Wow. Yes. I was helping Very somebody cool. um, right before the show pick out some products to start up fish yeah. taxidermy, and I mentioned the water brush, and he goes, well, you guys mention it every single week, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that tells you something there you right go. there. there you go. We must think it's pretty cool. Um, let's see. We have the... Uh, oh, we'll be going live. We'll be going live at the Wisconsin show. We'll be doing a walkthrough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, due to technical difficulties beyond our control. <laughs> we'll be doing a walkthrough. Kirsten's computer. <laughs> we'll be doing a walkthrough at the Wisconsin show. Um, Tom and Vicky are going to be going live in Australia for different seminars. Oh my Maybe just, just my mom and Brenda. <laughs> Randomly, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I think they're going to have a lot of fun in Australia, so tune yeah. in for that. Um, you can pre-order, get your... We're going to be coming back with a whole bunch of these next weekend, so you can get these pre-ordered so you aren't waiting for them. And Utah. Utah. We are, we are sending, taking pre-orders for the Utah show for forms. So you get the show discount, and we're free shipping for Utah people for forms only. So if wow. you're That's in crazy. Utah and haven't used our mule deer forms, Jeremy Judkins would swear by them. They are a must and you will not regret it. So definitely take advantage of that if you want free shipping and your discount. Forms only right now, but let us know and we will work with you on that. And I think that's it. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. A big thanks to Pat joining everybody. us in yeah. dog yeah. city yeah. for my yeah. parents oh, while they're gone. The and well, thanks for having me. Babysitting the students. Yes. So <laughs> thank awesome. you for tuning in. And next week, our live will not be normal because we'll be at the Wisconsin show. So it'll kind of be when we can fit in there. Yeah. So Just look yeah. for us. We'll try yep. to let you know. When well, we I think it'll be for the next few weeks. Honestly, the whole month of March. March is crazy yeah, with March shows. Crazy. The whole every, month every of March, week. it's going to be kind of sporadic of when we're live. Yeah. But. but we'll try to keep you posted yep. as best we can. Yes. Um, oh, and Amber's almost done with the Competitors Awards. There's a whole pile of eagles. Over there, there is yeah. a whole yeah. pile of eagles. That's pretty exciting. So it's very we'll exciting. We'll be posting pictures of those when we yeah. get them done, yeah. too. But look for that, the Competitors yeah. Competitors Award at your shows. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, you guys, and we'll catch you next time.